this is Spire's End, and pretty much everything you see comes in the box except for this mat. There are expansion stuff in the uh, in the game itself, um, or or in this game right now um, that you could purchase separately. I don't think I'll be showing off any expansion stuff. Um, I think I'll just skip right by it so that we none of that gets ruined because some of it's kind of new and i don't remember a ton of it so now before we dive into things the way you learn this game is that there is actually no rule book this is the box and these are what you see on the table is all the contents except for on the side here is like a bunch of like not beads cubes so that's all there is this is this is everything and the way you learn the game is essentially from these 12 cards that are on the table pretty simple basically it goes through everything and first it kind of talks about uh the navigation of the game right how the game navigates and what you do and basically the way that this works if you're here for the hildegard game is we're just going to go through the campaign cards really slowly right we just you kind of flip them over and you do what it says and you just move on with your life we have the whole setup so the way this sets up is it explains everything you have to do but the main thing to do in this card is shuffle seven ally cards and the game comes with seven but there is an extra ally you can buy which is where is she my Mar Mar marin marin this is the extra ally. So we're going to shuffle her in there and we have to pick out one to not be in this deck, right? Because Mary would make eight and you can't have eight allies. Um, so we're just going to shuffle this up a little bit and then we'll do our usual thing where we pick the third one down and dump that one. Unless it's Marin because I really want to play as Marin. So third one down is Rangitaki, which unfortunately this is the Rangitaki is the the uh protagonist of the next spire's end so unfortunately you won't get to see her so sad okay so now we have to shuffle these up and we reveal two allies and then one goes in this spot and one goes in this spot and we use both of these allies throughout the campaign now if an ally dies we put a new ally in and we keep going until we're out of allies and then, and then we lost which hopefully won't happen it has happened a lot in my my gameplays but hopefully it won't tonight so third one down is who is this? Uh, first, we have Rolf, the Kill Cow. Um, so we'll go over the cards a little bit. But basically, what you need to know is in the top up here is his life. Down here is his like shield, so the stuff you take away before life. At the bottom is everything that he's capable of doing. Now, it says actions, zero, shovel, and then results, five through eight with a one. Basically, what this is, is you have to spend health to do an action now obviously if it says zero that's zero health so you spend zero health and you can roll one d8 die all right you roll it and i roll the five so i would get to do one damage that's what that's what the one means so because you can't read because it's not on the card <laughs> so if you did like um where is it so four is feed so we had to spend four of our life but we could do two through five hits and then asterisk just means whatever the number is. Then it keeps going up. So six and seven does six damage and eight does five damage plus B, which is cripple, which we'll get into later. And it heals you one life. Um, so that's essentially how that works. So let's put him on this side and he gets five health. So we're going to use our red things for health. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll use black cubes for shield. So one, two, three, four. You go through shield before you go through health, which makes sense. And if at any point during any of this, any of you have questions, I will do my best to answer it. I will probably make mistakes throughout this gameplay because, again, I'm a little rusty on it. But if you see a mistake and you know this game, feel free to call it out. Especially if you're watching this later on, on YouTube because this game will probably be on YouTube at some point. All right. And Dane, the Rutterkin. All right. So the rest of our allies go up there. Dane's going to go over here with six life. One, two, three, four, five, six. And only three shield. One, one, two, three. All right, cool. And that's basically everything that we need for ally selection and setup. Oh, we do have to shuffle this small deck of cards uh this has to do with uh the vil or the enemies that we will face um but you don't shuffle the big stack the big stack stays the same so. all right so this basically goes over the card anatomy um so again you could see the hit points and whatnot hit point cubes armor cubes on the top right it shows there's rest and boost stuff which we'll get into later we don't have to really worry about that right now 
And then after drawing your two star ag allies, uh, locate all their thresholds and stuff. Uh, hit points to your allies' life and energy, and they are spent to perform actions. If you run out of HP, you die. Armor points are the physical protection. Armor takes damage until it's depleted. If you run out of AP, um, you then go to hit points first. All right, next it explains combat, which is the most exciting thing in the world because a lot of this game is rolling dice. An ally's turn in combat consists of three steps. Actions, recoup, and upkeep. So we're going to do those three things every single time. Ally number one must complete all three steps before ally number two. And that's the order of the game, right? Ally one, ally two, bad guy. Ally one, ally, tw ally two, bad guy. Step one, an ally has the option to perform one action per turn. Actions are performed by spending hit point cubes. Actions are indicated by the red bar at the bottom of your ally's hit card. The number on the far left of each bar is the cost uh, of these actions. So you can kind of see what I was talking about before. And you roll your D8, and you perform the action and everything. All right, so for example, you roll three, it does all the stuff, and then there's kickbacks, which are extra bonuses, which you see all the way on the right-hand side of the bar. Simple enough. All right, so the next stage, to, or step two, is to recoup, right? So we do an action and recoup. Step two, you perform one recoup, which on this card, you can see where my thumb is, it's the very top there, right? Recoup is you roll a die and you do that, and you get to heal. And you need to heal, right? Because you're going to be spending a lot of your life, and that's no good. Um... So, uh, so with recoup, uh, there is no HP cost for recoup. The recoup bar is located directly above B, where an ally can give points gained to another ally, but they cannot split it up. Cool. Choose a recoup and roll a 1d8 and then perform the results and you get to do whatever it is. And then you can rest um, and you can also boost. So this is the thing in the top right that's up here. That we didn't really talk about yet. So rest is an option to get more HP every recoup roll. If you skip your action, you can select to rest. Uh, so during recoup and heal, rest will add plus one hit point the first turn, plus two the second turn. So you don't do an action right, you just chill and, and you'll be good. Uh, so you get one extra life when you do it. Um, and then keep track of your consecutive rest counter with the rest meter in the top right. The rest meter resets if you perform an action or after three rests. So if we rest a bunch, we can heal a ton if we need to. So boost is during your recoup, you may receive more hit and slash armor points than you can use due to the threshold limit. In these cases, place an extra HP or AP tracker on the boost meter. Uh, also located at the top right of an ally. Once your meter is filled, you can spend it on a strength, which we'll get into later. So that's only during your recoup phase that you would possibly get that. Okay. And then next is upkeep. So basically it's managing the different effects. There's a circle effect. There's a bookkeep effect. And these are the examples of what the effects do, which we'll get into more later. We don't have to worry about it too much right now. And then the enemy goes. And the enemy is pretty simple. Basically the same steps again. Action one. Action or step one is action. Um, does action recoup and upkeep. And basically they have to first determine who they attack. So one through four is the person on my left. 5 through 8 is the person on my right. Once it's determined, select an action card. It will determine what action they perform. For example, if you reveal an action card with a 1, the enemy performs action bar 1. Simple enough. And that's the action cards up there in that corner. So we're just going to go through those cards and we already shuffle them up. Proceed to attack you like an ally, but be warned, enemies do not spend hit points for their attacks because that would be too easy. Recoup and status effects are performed at the same time as they are, uh, as they are for allies. Roll for recoup. Um, then tally up any status effects. Damage and healing distribution. Uh, so recoup and status effects are performed uh, the same as they are for allies. Sorry. Roll for recoup, then tally up any status effects. Uh, damage then goes uh, through armor points, then hit points. For example, if an enemy hits for five, then it can't really be split up and whatever. Okay. So this is just what the progression looks like, where you can see how it goes. And those are some icons for it. All right, cool. And then it gets into like looting and stuff like that, which we really don't need to worry about because that's... You know what it is and then death where you can have a death move which is really fun well maybe it's really fun we'll see and then we have effects and we have a status effect tractor which we need to keep tra uh, tr need to keep track of hopefully that explains it i'm going to kind of run through things but we'll we'll go through it slowly as we go along we'll make it at least one chapter maybe two uh sharp taco where is the map from you can get it on their website on spires end's website all right prologue begin here So, sweet tower, right? That's pretty cool looking. The art in this is, is great. All right, so, 
It was unusually dark before the moon was swallowed in red. Crimson light circled the dark orb like a blood sh like a bloodshot raven's eye. The ground shook and something unimaginable drilled its way out of the earth. It tore through the town with ungodly force. The streets filled up with fumes and the townsfolk fell into a deep, unnatural sleep. The strong, the frail, and the innocent all disappeared under the red eclipse. The spire stood there in silence. At its base was a door left ajar. Then we have to do card two. All right, so far, so good. Um, will you do the rest of the chapters on another night? Um, yeah, yeah, I think we can probably go through this. Um, probably not Tuesday, but maybe like after that. But yeah, I would, I would like to go through the entire campaign. It, would, it spoils a lot for people, but oh well. Uh, I know nothing about this game, but visually it looks cool. I do like the art in this game. All right, so dust and debris. You wake, horrified, gasping for air. Your head is pounding and you're covered in dust and debris. That makes sense. You unearth yourself and climb to your feet. A monstrous foreign object spirals above you. Probably like a spiral. Spire. Um, like a horn of a giant deity attacking the heavens. A quick glance reveals endless mounds of wreckage in every direction. It's strangely silent and you see no one about. You head off to the direction to find your uncle. Your last living relative. Hopefully. Thankfully, his cottage is outside the spire's wake. Untouched, he left you a note. That's really nice of him. I know you will come looking for me. Don't. I deeply regret what I've done. But during this incident, I hid. Then ran like a whimpering dog. In truth, I'm a coward, crippled by fear. You're strong, courageous, everything I'm not. That's why I'm. you must go. I suspect those missing or being held captive in the spire. Mount a rescue, find them, free them. I'm proud of the person you become. You must remain strong. I fear many hardships and horrors lie ahead. That is true. Don't. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the shame has clawed through my soul and I won't survive long. I made sure of that. Before I go, I have some knowledge I need to pass on. All right. It's highly recommended that you remove the instruction deck at this time. Otherwise, rev review uh, card three. So that's nice. He told me uh, 11 cards of instruction. That's cool. Chapter one. Chapter one. Cautious steps. And we're at a sweet door. You approach the door with a cautious step. I warn you, it's worse than you think. And you've imagined the unimaginable, no doubt, says an unfamiliar voice. A small creature reveals himself from behind the door. He is unkempt, unkempt, a little worse for wear. His eyes appear kind. What are you? You've never seen this creature before. I've always been close, but you people are too involved with yourselves to notice. We live beneath you. Only this thing here is much, much deeper, or is from much, much deeper, he mutters, looking up at the spire. What do you know about this? You ask, hopeful. I've squirreled around. These underdwellers have horrible red eyes. They move silently and quickly. He stops and sniffs the air. I must go. With that, he scampers off to the spire. You move to follow him when you see it. Red eyes cutting through the darkness. You attack. Hey. All right. Reveal cards four and five. So we take cards four and five. And we have to reveal them. So at first it teaches up setup, and then we have a fun enemy to go against. So the setup shows... Um, that the setup and encounters the picture as it was. That's fun. Placing the play field, whatever. Uh, tip, bleed damage skips armor points and damage hit points directly. That stinks. After encounters, allies in play regain all hit points and armor points. That's fun. Any status effects and boost meters are cleared and the action deck is shuffled. If you defeat the doorman, reveal card six. So, this is him. He has 10 life and four armor. So, I'll put a bunch of those cards on it. And then he does those attacks. So I'm going to place him up here because then you should be able to zoom in. And it's a little, uh, not super clear to see, but at least you can kind of see it then. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, you know what? We are going to move him down here. It's just going to be easier to reach. And then you get four of the armor ones. So he's got, he's kind of beefy, but there is two of us going against him. So hopefully that helps. And we will start. So we have said before that the way that this all works, right, is um, we get to do our action, then recoup, then upkeep. So... I'll put it down here for reference. Uh, we're going to go left to right. So, Rolf, the kill cow. Uh, we're probably going to do uh, prune, right? We're going to do his first thing right here, prune, and spend a hit point because there's a better chance uh, to do more damage and get a hit. 
So we'll spend one hit points and we'll roll our D8, which is a two. So we missed completely. That's embarrassing. And that stinks a lot. So that is a step one, the action phase. All right. So next up is the recoup action. So we can now try to heal, which is what we're going to do. And we we fit we failed in that too. Okay, so that's that's really cool. Things are going super well. Hopefully you can kind of see the die there. Yeah, I guess you can. It's not too hard to see. Um so we did that, and then we would do any upkeep stuff, right? And that's the end of that. So now we're gonna do Dane. Um once again, I'm gonna spend one hit point because I'm hoping for the best here. And we'll roll. Let's try a black die. Let's see if black does black show up better? No. I guess what we could do. roll it this way so then he rolls a six now with a six uh we get to do two damage so what did i say bash and boost or boast uh six does two damage to him so we take away the black things first then we do step two uh time to get a new d8 i know i gotta check this one out <laughs> seems fairly straightforward but which card is stint sotp standard operating something procedure start of the start of the program pilgrimage profile <sighs> if you let me know what that means i'm really bad with my acronyms but yes it is very straightforward all right so now we'll do heal uh we rolled a two sorry I, i'm gonna zoom in on that um and we failed that so that's fun okay so now we do upkeep we don't have any upkeep things to do so we don't have to we don't have to worry about that so now the enemy goes so the uh, what he's going to do right is going to be based off of this card right so this card is a five so he's going to do a five which is key swarm which sounds delightful um oh we have to roll a die first to decide who he's going to attack uh a five is our right side so he's going to attack dane over here first and then he's going to do a five which is a key swarm which has a plus on it which i don't fully remember what the plus is don't tell him chat then i can't answer the question <laughs> all right so key swarm i gotta remember what the little star is i don't fully remember this attack ability affects all opposing targets in play okay so it affects everyone it's not just him it's gonna affect both of them so we're gonna roll our die and hopefully it misses uh, it does not he rolls a four which is on his card is a one damage. So it does one onto both of our people. It hits off the shield first, right? Before um, the hit points. Now it gets discarded and then he has to recover. Uh, five would recover one, but I don't think you can actually heal over your max life. I'm almost positive you can. Yeah, it doesn't say. But I'm almost positive you can't heal over your max life. All right. Now you know the game. And we are going to literally rinse and repeat this. This, to me, um, Spire's End is a, a little more basic of a version than Hildegard. Like, Hildegard I really like, and the combat seems a little more to it. Uh, not a ton more, but, like, a little bit more. All right. So, let's do Rolf, the Kill Coward. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the hit point again, because I feel like we need some big hits. And we roll the six which does two damage onto him, which is really nice. And then we roll for heals, which is an eight. Let's go, that heals three. Um, but I have two damage to me, so we just heal up to the two. And people have to let me know if it can go over. I don't think it can go over his max life. There's one thing I don't remember. All right, so Dane is gonna attack. We're gonna use one health again to do uh, the bash and boast, which is a seven, which also does two damage. Let's go. See, we're crushing this game. This game is so easy, chat. We're going to heal. Uh, a seven heals two. So he's back up to full life. So easy. So easy, chat. Uh, can you put your extra health that went over into your boost meter? So boost is done during recoup. Uh, you may receive more hit points armor than you can use during the threat. You're right. Place extra HP. Uh, you are right. You are right. You do use it as a boost meter. Thank you. All right. So... We went one over with him. 
and he's just back to even, right? I think that's what we did. One over here. That's it. Thank you for pointing that out. That is true. During recoup, you may receive more hit points slash armor points than you can use during your, your threshold limit. Yeah. All right, cool. I wonder how you refresh uh, armor. I don't remember off the top of my head. All right, so we're good. Um, that's all set. Now he goes. We have to decide who he's going to attack against. A three. It's going to be Rolf on our left side. And he's going to use attack number one, which is slash. So let's see if he can slash a seven. That's not good. Slash does two damage. Takes off two armor. No good. Okay, cool. And then he has to try to heal. Uh, seven, he does heal one. And then we're good. Let's go back to our guy. Um... Let us. Okay, let us. Um, I just want to see something really fast. Okay. Let us. Let's do one more HP again. And we'll do the prune attack. And we roll an eight. Let's go. Three damage. All right, we are doing way better than we used to. And then he also gets the heal one. So we get our one HP back. And then we're going to roll to heal. It's a three, which doesn't do anything, unfortunately. Um, so that's that is that, and there is no upkeep to do. If you're enjoying the oh, that's just me. Never mind. I, I thought it was thought it was someone else. Okay, so Dane is gonna go now. We're gonna use one hit point again because this feels like a good strategy. And then eight. Oh cow. Sometimes I sometimes the dice love me. Uh an eight does three damage and heals one back. And then we can try to recoup. Uh, it's a four, which does get us one, which is nice. So when we do get three of them, we get to use um, a strength. Once you have filled the meter, you could spend it for a strength, which basically lets you uh, plus one action roll. If you have, <laughs> excuse me, um, lets you get plus one on an action roll, basically. And if we have two swords, it's plus one on the highest roll. All right, so there is no upkeep um, to do anything there. So now he goes, he's going to roll to see who he attacks. Eight's going to be right hand side. He's going to do a, the six key burst um okay so dane's gonna get hit in the face pretty good with a two actually no it misses it's dope <laughs> all right and then now he's gonna see if he heals he rolls a one he doesn't heal we are crushing it chat we we're doing so well all right we're gonna use one hit point again <coughs> and we're gonna critically fail and then we're gonna heal up uh three completely misses all right, so nothing good happened there. We're going to use one hit point on this side with Dane. Dane also rolls a one and heals with a five, so he gets one hit point back. So at least that's something. All right, he's going to go now, and he's going to go on the six, which is the right side. The attack he's going to do is the third one, which is puncture. And he rolls a three, which does one damage to him. And then we're going to roll the heal, which is a seven. I can start doubling up these rolls probably, which is what we might do. We might do um, black as heal and red as attack. We might start doing that to just do this a little bit faster. So we're going to use one hit point. Red is our attack die. Black is going to be our heal die. All right. So three, he doesn't do anything, but six, he heals one back. So I guess that's something. He's also going to use up one hit point. We're going to use red for attack, black for heal. Uh, five is a hit. Does a damage and six heal puts one health back, which is nice. All right, cool. He attacks the right hand side. He's going to do attack number two. Red is for attack. Uh, or I'm sorry. Number two is this side. So it does six damage with a two. Uh, which does two damage to us. So one black, one red, which is no good. And he doesn't heal any. All right. He's getting a little low on health and I don't like that. I'm a little worried. Nah, but we still got to do it. We still got to spend one hit point. We got to finish him off. A three and a two. Oh my god, those are big misses. All right, Dane's gonna spend one. This is not good. The heal though, we could put on the other side if we need to, which we might. All right, five and a seven. So he spent one. A five does one damage, and now the seven heals two. I'm gonna heal two on him. Right? You could do it on the other person, but you can't split up the heal. 
Now, Doorman's going to attack the left-hand side. He's going to do whatever number five is, which affects both people. So he rolls a six, which does two damage on the both. Not good. And he heals eight, which is two healing for him. Really not good. All right, it's getting a little tight. I don't like this. Rolf might not make it, which is not great. And then, uh, so again, red die. We're going to do on the zero. Just going to hit him with a shovel. Just a classic shovel attack. Rolls a four, misses, two, does nothing. Not great. Ugh. Dane, let's spend the health. Let's try to get this done. All right, a seven and an eight. Huge. So, a seven does two damage. And uh, eight is three hit points back. Let's do three on him. So, he's at full life. Hopefully, he's not going to attack him. Uh, Shree, I've played this before. It never occurred to me to roll both dice at once. You gotta be a fisher, man. <laughs> Matt Cow needed to go talk to HR about those rolls. I know, right? It's rough right now. All right, let's see who he's gonna attack. He's gonna attack the left side, which is good. That's good. That's the side we wanted him to attack. He's gonna be a two attack, which is good. I right, rolls a two. That's a miss. And gets a two, which is nothing. Let's go. All right, this is our chance. Let us. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna spend two health because we're gonna get to heal anyway. So two health, he's going to do a slice with this shovel. A sweet, sweet slice. Rolls a four. Oh, wow. That is three damage. Okay, knocked him out. That's it. He done. He is done. Uh, we didn't get to do any status effects, which was interesting. Uh, it would have been nice to do that to show that off, but that's all right. Um, so now when everything is done... Um, this is all about loot, death, quick start, all that fun stuff. All right, I think it's just this card that shows it, right? Yeah, so after encounters, allies and play regain all hit points and armor points. Any status effects and boost meters are cleaned and the action deck is shuffled. So all of this goes away. Sweet. Shuffle this deck back up. So that gives you the rough idea. That gives you the rough idea. And like I said, it's um, Hildegard. One thing with Hildegard too is it's more of a choose your adventure right out of the gate. This kind of has you go down like a basic path right in the beginning. And then it will um, kind of go through it a little bit. So if you defeat the doorman, reveal card six. I guess if you don't defeat the doorman, you just give up. You just, you just lost. So doorman, gone. Four, five, reveal card six. Okay, here we go. Uh, victory! Hey! Plus one. Increase ally armor point threshold uh, by one. Pull 32, card 32 to mark this accomplishment and then continue below. Alright, so um, armor threshold. Oops, hold on, let me show this off really quick. So it's up here, it's kind of hard to see, but we could add plus one. So everyone gets plus one onto it now. So I'll mark that on the threshold. Pretty sweet, pretty dope. Um, that's really nice. This is going to help us out a lot. And we have to pull card 32. All right, hold on. Let me look at the terminology for pull because pulling means something. I don't remember it means that you actually do said thing. On the case you'll be asked to pull a card, in these cases you will reveal a card out of sequence without advancing from your current card. There we go. So we got oh, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a nice threshold counter card. That, that's cool. All right, so it's what I have up here. That was, that was less exciting than what I thought it was going to be. All right, so we get to choose your adventure part now. Chat. Chat. Wake up. You're going to choose this for me. Because I'm not choosing my own choose adventure game. So, the creature is bleeding on the floor facing you. He shifts a bit. Still alive. What have you done with them? You know it understands, regardless of what language it speaks. Around him are keys. At least ten of them. Some are chained to him. Others loose. Two keys are directly in front of you. It could be your imagination, but it looks like one is beginning to move. <laughs> so, do we finish him off and take everything? Do we leave him? Let's take what he has and move on. And let's take him captive. All right. Twitch has finished. Twitch has voted 1-2-1. One, one. So, they're voting to leave him. And YouTube's voting 3-0-1. I'm sorry. 2-0-1. Which means, oh, finish him off and leave him as tie for two apiece. Which gives two to finish him off, which is four for finishing him off, one for captive? No, two for captive, 
and two for leave him. He is dead. He is dead. So we finish him off and we take everything. I hope you all are happy with your choices. Hopefully it doesn't backfire. Dancing keys. Let's go. All right. So dancing keys. Uh, you stab him until he stops moving. Well, that, that got that got dark quick. Then reach down to pick up a key. It slides away in the, along the floor. Oh my god, these freaking keys. The other keys start to shake and pop like kernels in a skillet. Another key leaps into the air, then disappears. Then another one, and another one. Quickly, you dive toward the closest key. Oh no, I have to roll a, car I have to roll a thing. All right, so roll a d1. One, two, you aren't fast enough, the keys are gone, and the remains of the creature have vanished. Three, four, five, six, they disappear quickly. Only one key remains, and I get the first key. Seven, eight, I get the first key and the curse key. Big money. Big money, chat. I know I rolled like a lot of ones and twos, but here's our chance. This is it. Please be an eight. Please be, uh, please be an eight. Okay, seven. Hey, let's go. Okay, seven. And wait, let me let me make sure you all see that. I'm not cheating. It is a seven. So with that being said, um, seven, eight. You got one. Hey, the card's so proud of me. There is a flash of light as the key settles in your grasp. You search the creature and find another key. So reward the first key and the curse key. So that's cool. So I get card 10 and 11. All right, so get rid of eight, get rid of nine. So we get 10, which is first key. Hey, that's fun. Equip this card, reveal card 13. Okay, well not yet. I will get that in a second. This key allows you one dice roll on locks. Cool. Who knows, maybe it'll lead in the right direction. That is true, who knows. And then we get card 11, which is the curse key. Looks like a one from my angle. It started your, your angle's wrong. Don't do not do that to me. <laughs> All right, so this key allows you one dice roll unlocks. Uh, at the start of encounters, using the action deck reveal, the first action card. If it's a one place, it is... If it is a one, place at the bottom of the deck. The modifier occurs after all other key effects. Oh, no, that's not good. All right, so we'll slide those two keys with him. Um, and now we get to reveal card 13. So all of these get to go away. Um, okay, seven, oops, I can't put these things in order. So seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so card 13, let's go. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, sunshine, that sounds positive. I mean, there's a little bit of blood on the card, but you know, hopefully that, that's a good thing, so. All right, sunbeams punch through dirty, or I'm sorry, dusty air onto the back wall. The light blazes a hot orange in between two corridors. Uh, there are signs of a struggle. A dead underdweller is lying face down in front of you with some overturned furniture. Oh, is it nice furniture? If it's nice furniture, that, that shouldn't matter. We could buff that right out. Glowing red blood trails along the floor has ha haphazardly toward the left. You f suddenly feel warm. Humid air hit the back of your neck. Something tall and thin darts through the sunlight. You wait a moment and brace yourself for an attack, but none comes. In the midst of this chamber, stark isolation, you hear a hum. There is a small flicker of light from the left corner, and the humming increases. I'm not going to make it loud because I'll blow out your speakers. Uh, the orange rays of sunlight start to fade away as the morning begins to pass. The room grows dark. So... Do we follow the tall, thin creature into the corridor on the left, or I want to avoid it? I will go to the right. That's what we gotta do. All of y'all really want to follow this thin guy. You really think he's gonna lead us to like somewhere good, don't you? Slender Vantage <laughs> Friend. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that stuff is like has always creeped me out. Slender Man. I mean, not as much as I it used to, but he's been around for a while. But man, like when they people like photoshopped him in like the background of photos like really well. Ugh. Oh, Karakai. <laughs> uh, no, this is not Marvel Champions. <laughs> what is this? Uh, this is Spire's End. The the original one, not the Hildegard one. What's the worst that could happen? He kills us. To be as this guy from this card game, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> May as well join the viewers who thirst for blood. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Twitch said yes, and YouTube said yes. Everyone said yes. Ev everyone wants to follow the thing guy and see where this leads. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so uh, I follow the tall thin. Oh, I'm, it's not even a thin guy. It's a thin creature. I just lied to you all, but whatever. 
All right, so we reveal card 14. Card 14 it is Reflections. That sounds positive. All right, the left corridor reveals a small circular room um, with rows of benches facing three narrow mirrors. As you enter, an underdweller is passing through the center mirror as if it were a wall of water. The surface swirls in red as his body slides through. Chat, let me, let me, in red. Okay. The room hums for a moment, then the mirror's reflections snap back into place and the sound abruptly stops. Up close, the mirrors look ordinary, reflections and all. You take a deep breath and put your hand on the surface. It's warm to the touch, but solid. Whatever occurred here is beyond reason. You see nothing else of interest. After uh, inspecting the surfaces of all the mirrors, you head back to the corridor. Something lurks. All right. Do we hear something or do we not hear something? All right. Twitch is saying uh, they do not hear things. YouTube is saying they do not hear things. You have about 30 seconds left. I like how I like how we're gonna follow the guy. We're gonna we're gonna watch him go through the blood red mirror. We're gonna touch it and just be like, nah, things are cool. Things are good. I think we're good. All right, YouTube ties two to two. Everyone on YouTube said we didn't hear a thing. So guess what? We heard nothing. So reveal card 17. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. So, card 17, chapter two. Have we been on chapter two this whole time? No, this is a new chapter. Welcome to chapter two. Reveal card 17, yeah. We have made the chapter two, chat. We survived. Okay. The twins. Oh, that sounds bad. Oh. Maybe it's good. The twins. Giant pillars mark the entrance to the next corridor. Obsidian, obsidian tile uh, stretches in every direction. It's dark, unsettling, and uncomfortably warm. As you cross the chamber floor, two dark forms appear from either side. They slide towards you with supernatural speed, as if pushed by a sudden and violent wind or a slender man. They attack in unison. Oh, God. Okay, we have to, we have to roll a D8. Oh, God. We rolled a four. The masked figure on the left makes the first move. Three swift punches strobe your chest. That sounds bad. An ally suffers two damage. Start the encounter. Ugh. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't good. Uh, suffers two damage. Um, we're gonna give it to Dane because he's got two shield or he's got four shield. So we'll make him go down a little bit. So we reveal cards eighteen and nineteen, which is the twins. Twins, Basil. Twins. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, five. And then he gets five shield because we have an extra one from the threshold. So three, four, five. He only gets four. So he's down to two shield because he took two damage. That's who we gave it to was Dane. Because our right side seems to be our strong side so far. And now we are going to roll a lot of dice. So the twins set up. So. Oh, geez. Sorry. Just totally went off on this. The twins set up. Uh, many of the twins' actions occur twice per turn, as indicated by the double sword icon on the action bar. Roll twice and perform them as separate attacks on the same target. Uh, as you battle twins, place all the action cards they perform in a line on the field of play. If either of these two combinations occur in a row, 5566, five, reveal card 20. Otherwise, you survive the encounter. Oh, that sounds terrible. Now, one thing I do have to do is um, at the start of the encounter deck, using the action deck, reveal the first action card. If it's a one, we place it on the bottom. It is a three. So we don't place it on the bottom. Oops, sorry. I didn't show you that. It's a three. So we don't place it on the bottom, but we don't. We just revealed it. So we know it's going to be a three that the twins are doing. All right. There are the twins. There are the twins. So. Oh, they do have a chance of hitting their friend, which is nice. Uh, stunning an ally. Not, not ideal. Um, let's bring this down here because I think we're going to need this. Because stun, no action next turn. Okay. All right, so that is everything. They have eight shield. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten life. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. All right, sweet. The brother's grim, right? <laughs> Exactly. Okay. 
So we're going to do uh, Rolf first. Hmm. I'm going to do two health with him. We're going to we're going to go fast on them. We're going to see if we can take out the twins super fast. So red die is attack. Blue die is uh, heal. Situation is getting grim. Brothers grim. Exactly. Oh, a seven. Let's go. Okay. So a seven on two is four damage Two four damage. And a four is we get to heal one of our of our things back, which is pretty darn good. He we're only gonna do one. We're gonna be a little more conservative with him because we have more shield over here, so I'm not as worried. Um, so we do one, which is a four, which does one damage, and a three, which does nothing. Hey Kenny, how's it going? This is Spire's End. You've seen me play Hildegard before. This is the original one. Or the first one, I guess. All right, cool. So now they are going to go. So, um, the twins occur twice per turn. It's indicated that. So roll twice and perform them as separate attacks on the same target. Okay, so we have to roll target first. Uh, so six, it's going to be on Dane. He's attacking Dane. So he's going to be a three, which is whistle fist, which sounds not ideal. All right, so it's going to be um, two attacks. So red is going to be the first attack, black is going to be the second attack, and then we'll heal. Oh, God, it's two eights. All right, so he does two damage, and then A, which is strength. Strength means a plus one on the roll. Plus one on the highest roll. The next turn. So to remember that, strength. Um, and then he rolls it again. So he does another two damage and gets another one. So it's going to affect his next turn, right? So his next one is he's going to be able to do it again. And now he's going to heal a four. He doesn't heal anything. So at least that's something. So, uh, the spiders end in Hildegard with their, no. So the only way that they're related roughly is that one of the characters in Spires End, Hildegard has her own adventure. And that's about it. That's the overlap. That, from my understanding, is the overlap. Now, there's a lot of different ways that this game ends, and I haven't seen all the storylines. So maybe there's a loose connection, but I kind of doubt it. Hildegard really seems to be its own thing. And I think he kind of keeps them pretty separate. Okay. Rolf is going to go. Do we... I'm going to do... No, uh, I can't do two. No, we're just going to do one. We're just going to do one hit. So one is prune, the three, which misses, and the three doesn't heal. Okay, this is a really bad roll for us. He's going to go. Um, no, we can't heal. We're going to just roll a punch. Actually, no, do we just recover? I almost feel like we just should do the recover. I feel like we need to heal him up. So what we can do for healing is recoup. We could do the rest. Um, so let's do that. We're going to rest. Now we get plus one on our heal. So a two would be zero, but now we get one. We get plus one onto the roll, right? So it's up to four life. Okay. That is that. Now they go. Uh, he rolls a four, which is going to be this left side. So now... The next turn, he's going to increase his rolls. Next one, oh, it's a three. Okay, so this matters because now we have to reveal card 21, which is, wait, oh, no, no, that's not what we want. We reveal card 20, sorry. Obsidian endings. This sounds positive. One of the twins unexpectedly impales himself with his sword, cracking sparks and sulfic smoke ignite from his antenna. He pulls the blade free, then flings it to his brother who catches it. Oh, my God, this sounds so bad. Okay. New encounter conditions. Strength encounter on every character and play discard card 19. Pull card 101. Do not reset hit points or ally armor points. Oh, okay. Sure. So. Discard card 19. Okay, that's the brothers. And pull card 101? Oh, 
Hold on, wait, wait. Isn't it just 5-5 five, five and 6-6? Six, six? Well, then, uh, no. It's just doubles, right? Oh, you're right. It is 5-5-6-6. Five, five, six, six. Okay, okay, okay. Thank God. I thought it was just doubles. You're right. You're right, right. Thank you. Okay, that's good. That's really good. So three is going to be Whistle Fist. Um, these are going to be both attacks. Red is the first idea. Thank you. I just thought it was doubles. All right. So first attack is a two. Now this one gets pushed up by one with the strength, right? Gets one higher. Um, yeah, I think since he got it twice, he would do it on both rolls. So the three with the three uh, does nothing. It does nothing. But on the five, it becomes a six, which just does one. And we said, what? It was the left side, I think? So it just does one damage. So that wasn't terrible. And now he's going to heal roll, which is an eight. So he heals two. Um, but we haven't taken any life left. So I think that's fine. I don't think he would heal up more. Okay. Now it's Rolf's turn. Spend one hit point. So we're going to prune again. Oh my god. All right, a three does nothing. A five heals one. So at least we got that back, I guess. We are going to heal a bit more. So we're going to get plus two to the heal. And it's a three. So just two life we get back. So he's up to full health at least. Okay. Next card. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. We have to first do who is he attacking. Three is this side still. Is a one. Okay, so first attack is the red die. Black is the second one. Five and eight is what does damage to us. They both do one damage, okay? So two total. And he's going to heal a three, which is nothing. All right, we're good still. Rolf, I feel like, is slowly getting knocked out. <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to do one more Rolf. So we're doing do prune again. It's got to hit at some point, right, chat? Okay, no, two. I'm just going to miss. A uh, seven heals back two, though. So at least we get two back. Dane, we're going to start swinging now. Time for him to start swinging. So we're going to use one hit point again. So bash and boast. I rolls a six, which is good. Because six is two damage. All right, we're almost done with all of his black dice. Um, and his heal was nothing. So we don't do anything there. All right, he is going to attack left side as a four. All right, there's a six. So we don't want another six to come out. Six is turncoat. Turncoat, force an ally to attack another ally. Okay, not great. He is going to do red is just attack and uh, black is heal. We're doing it on Rolf, right? So he rolls a two. It doesn't do anything. Five does heal one, but he is at full life. Okay. All right. I feel like we're doing okay. So we got some more life with Rolf. I think we're going to use the one again. We'll do per... Uh, you know what? We're going to do two. We're going to do two. I have a good feeling about this roll. Two hits. We're going to slice. Okay, we rolled a two, so we miss. That's pathetic. And a four heals back one. How are we this bad at this? How can I roll so well for him every single time? Whatever. Okay. He's going to also throw away two health. I feel like we got to start being aggressive. Okay, a five and a one. So a five on the two does three damage. So one, two, three. All right, finally doing some damage. But the problem is we have like no health left. <laughs> uh, seven is going to attack Dane. This this could be not good. All right, but it's a one, so that's fine. So red die is the first attack. Black die is the second attack. It's a one and a six, so it does do one damage. Gondor calls for dice. <laughs> All right. And his heal is nothing. All right, so we're going to have to heal with him, or with Dane, that's for sure. Right, we're going to do one hit point again with Rolf. Going to do the old prune. It's a five and a five. Okay, that's good. So a five is one damage. And then five, he heals one. Now we're going to heal with him again. So we're skipping our action and just do a heal. It's a seven. Let's go. So seven would be two plus one is three. Two, three. So we're almost up to full hit points again, which is really nice. Okay.
Let's see who he's attacking. A seven. It's Dane he's going after now with a two. All right. So two. All right. First attack is red. Oh my God. Two sevens. Are you kidding me? So it's going to be four damage total. One, two, three, four. I have one life left. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and he's going to heal none. So at least that was something. Rolf. Is going to attack one. With a prune attack. A six. Does two damage. Not bad. We're, we're staying with the heal. No, in fairness, we all have one life left. True. Deep thoughts. All right. So we're going to heal. An eight. Let's go. All right. So eight would be three. Plus two more is five total. So that actually heals us up all the way. One, two, three, four five let's go i'm assuming this game is supposed to be this hard uh yeah yeah i don't think it's supposed to be really easy but so the thing is i don't know if you're here for the beginning if these allies die i actually have all these allies as backup so we just keep pulling until we get rid of all of them so i'm actually doing okay um like at some point your allies are supposed to die so it's not like the end of the world all right so he's gonna attack Eight, which is right side, which is going to be Dane, which isn't bad. All right, so we could start discarding some of these, right? So we just have to keep them if they're in order. All right, so a five onto Dane, uh, which is going to be a double attack. So red's first. Oh, my God, two eights. All right, so it does six damage. So long, so long, Dane. That is six damage done to Dane. Rolling double eights. At least, at least he can roll double eights. That is something. So what happens when they die is there is a death move. And I have to look that up because I don't quite remember. Crazy. <laughs> so death. It happens to us all. When an ally comes to a, their dramatic end, they will trigger the death move before you discard them. Death move. When an ally dies, they perform a death move indicated by the black action bar at the bottom. So example, strength on a chosen target. In this example above, you would cast strength for three turns. If an ally dies during an encounter, and they will, a new ally must take their place until all allies have perished. Remember, there are only seven. Preserve yourself as much as possible. Fate is not on your side. Your journey ends when everyone dies. So, we get to put luck on a chosen target. Now, luck on an action roll. Okay. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Sorry, let me look at this. So luck is on an action roll, roll twice. Pick best roll. So I'm going to put one on luck. Just put the yellow here. So this kind of signifies like this is his his luck thing. Okay. All right. So he gets, he gets annihilated. We still have to heal him. I won't forget that. Our next ally is... Hildegard, let's go. She has her own game. She's got to be good, right? <laughs> All right. Comes in with three life. And by three, I mean six. And then with shield is four. Two, three, four. Cool. Now, he has to heal. So let's do his heal thing first. Uh, which is a seven. Good. I was really hoping he would heal. And I'm really happy he's rolling super well. Okay. So we have luck on our side right now. Um, oh, but he can't. He can only spend one hit point. That's not ideal. I'm actually going to heal. No, do I heal? No, we're just going to do a zero attack. Or yeah, we're just going to hit with a shovel. Okay, a four and a one. That's nothing. Okay. Do we want to do luck? I guess we should have really said it in the beginning. I'm not going to do anything with that yet. That's that's fine. He's he's useless. So Hildegard's going to attack. We're going to use a one, which is going to be the fanged ferret attack. I already like this. Uh, very cool. So it seems like you're supposed to finish a whole run of the story each time. Yeah, you. I've I've only done it a couple times. The story's pretty long. It's like a hundred some cards, but not all of them because you're going to go through different things. But we are in chapter two. I have like six, four, six, four, six chapters. All right. So we're doing a one, which is a fanged ferret. Let's go. A four and an eight. Okay. This is actually huge because fanged ferret will do one damage. But the bigger thing is the eight, which heals. 
I didn't even look up what hijinks is. I didn't even realize she had a thing called hijinks. So it could have been a cleanse, a bubble, or a rebuild. Interesting. But anyway, we roll an eight. That's fine. Because we get to heal three now. We don't have to heal on herself. We're going to heal it on Rolf, which is sweet. Okay, so let's see. They are going to attack five, which is they're going after Hildegard, which I don't like. I like Hildegard. Hey! Double fives! Now we get to recard 20. The Obsidians. Alright, so new encounter condition, strength, and encourage on every character in play. So strength is plus one on all rolls, and encourage is plus one attack damage. So we have to discard 19. He was almost dead, so why not? And we have to pull a card 101. Hildy got game. 101. Oh wait, that's 110. One the twin. Oh, it's a red card now. That's probably good. Right. Uh ah, he's so much more menacing now. That's fine. Special rules, strength, twin, and both allies, encourage, twin, and both allies. All right, so. I assume he comes in with new life and defense, right? That makes the most sense. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's attacking Hildegard, right? Uh, Angus, I'm going to order this game and Matt looks like my kind of fun. It is fun. It, it, it really is enjoyable. I know this like, seems like just a lot of dice rolling and that's what it is. Uh, but the choose your own adventure thing is really, really cool. And if you like this, Hildegard, I think is, is slightly better. No, not better. It's just different. But I like Hildegard a lot too. Um, and there are small mini expansions with this. And you don't have to get them yet. I would wait. Unless you want to, obviously. I used to read Choose Your Own Adventure books, but I haven't seen a game like this before. Can you play a co-op too? You can. Yeah. One person is um, the first person. One person is the other person. So it's not like a super crazy co-op, but you, you can you can do it. You can do the same with Hildegard too. Okay. So he's going to come in. Uh, we're going to attack Hildegard. We're on a five, which is meditate, which seems terrible already. So that's cool. All right. So strength plus one on our action rolls. And encourage, let's encourage, plus one attack damage. If you have double sword, plus one in the highest roll. Okay, a two and a one. So, let's make sure we're doing this right. Um... I don't know if the effect on the slash, you get to do all of them or just one of them. I guess all of it. I guess we can say we all of it. So a two and a one on a meditate is a zero, zero, right? It does no damage, but because of strength, you get plus one in action roll. So it's going to be a three and a two, which does nothing. Oh, it's just on the highest roll. Okay, plus one, uh, plus one attack damage. So I'm going to say it does one damage. Because he was doing zero. I'll start with Hildegard for sure. Nice. Alright, so he's going to heal. Uh, well, it doesn't heal anything, so that's fine. Okay. So, the way that this is going to work now... I, I might be doing this wrong with Encourage. Encourage? Yeah, Encourage... So I'm not sure if the slash means you do both. If you have double sword plus one, the highest roll. Okay. And then plus one attack damage. Plus one action roll. If you have double sword plus one, the highest roll. Yeah, I'm not sure if the slash does both. Luck on an action. Roll twice. Pick best roll. If you have... 
Oh, no. I guess it's saying what to do. Plus one actual roll. If you have double sword, plus one the highest roll. Okay, I get what it's saying now. Okay, so now it's our turn. So we are going to get encouraged, which means plus one attack damage. So we're going to be doing one more damage. We have to start plowing through his life. Um, so we're going to do slice. We're going to use two hit points, and we're going to attack and heal, and we're going to use our luck. Now, luck states on an actual roll, roll twice. So, we're going to roll both dice. We also get strength and encourage. So, plus one on the attack. Strength is plus one on the action roll. So, we get whatever's the highest one on slice, plus we get to roll again. Or, we get to add one to the, the attack. So, a five and a three, right? So, it's going to be a six. Because it's plus one on the action roll. Luck is going to choose the one that we want. And we get plus one damage. So, a five from what we do two life is three damage oh wait no it's plus one so it's gonna be a six which makes it four damage plus one attack is five damage two three four five hopefully i did that all right i think i did um but we get rid of luck right we're, we're not we're not lucky anymore you can only do luck once and then we get to heal well, okay, we don't get to heal. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Now it's Hildegard's turn. Um, yeah, let's do let's do a one hit point and roll. Okay, one and then heal. So we get to plus one in action roll, plus one damage. So we get zero damage, so it's one damage, and six gets to heal us one. So we'll heal back up one, just fine. I don't think we need the ladies out in a roll anymore, or a row anymore, because we we already got his the, the guy. So, all right, two is gonna attach or attack Rolf, and he's doing a one, which is a solo punch. All right, so we're rolling both dice, red ones first. Oh my god, an eight and a seven? Are you kidding me? All right, so it's gonna be plus one actual. We have that on the highest roll, um, so it can't go any higher, which is fine. Plus one attack. So plus one on the highest roll. I guess he wouldn't do an extra damage. He would just do plus one on the highest roll. Um, so it's just two damage. That's all it is. That's fine. I don't think he actually gets the extra attack. A four doesn't heal. All right, cool. We're doing all right. Now, we're going to do one with him. So we're doing a prune. Okay, so we missed completely, but seven does heal too. So that's something. <laughs> Hildegard, we're gonna use two. We're gonna use bombs away, cause we need to start making some things happen. Bombs away, oh my God, a one, are you kidding me? How am I rolling this bad every time? Um, Actually, I'm sorry. Encourage should have done plus one damage. So we still would have done damage, even though we got zero, Um, from my understanding. I get plus one damage and then a five heals one. Hopefully that that's actually how that works with the plus one damage. I assume you still do one even if you do zero because that just makes sense. All right, so five is going to be Hildegard. It's going to be a two. Solo kick. Red's first, black second. All right, so four and a three. So plus one your highest roll brings us up to a five. And then if you have that, plus one your highest roll brings us up to a six. Okay, so solo kick is going to do one damage, and a three is going to do nothing. Cool. Now he's going to heal up. A four doesn't heal anything. <clears throat> All right, Rolf is going to do two hit points. This is going to be a slice. Let's go. Big hits, big hits, big roll, big roll, big roll. Oh, freaking one. How is this possible? <laughs> and a four is going to heal one of them. Okay, this is going. This is great. I love this game already. All right, we're going to do two hit points with Hildegard. We do bombs away again. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We do get plus one damage. Okay, an eight. Thank God, an eight. Off a of two is four, five damage. That That's a lot of damage. We won. Holy cow. Okay. Hopefully I didn't mess that up too much. I might have, but whatever. Playing through a custom Marvel Champions campaign. Pretty fun. That's awesome. This sort of die roll looks like something I would do. This is... Disgustingly, Brian, Brian stopped rolling once. I know, right? 
All right. Now we didn't, we rolled, we got two fives, right? That was what it was. It wasn't two sixes. Yeah, it was two fives. Okay. If you survive, reveal card 21. We did survive. Thank God. Triumph. And they call me mad for keeping a large collection of spare dice. I know, right? I'm, I'm about to chuck some dice out the window. All right. Increase ally hit point threshold by one. Let's go. You know who would appreciate that? Womp, 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 Dane. <laughs> That's all right. All right. Chat, get ready. You're going to have to decide. You're going to have to decide, so just, just get ready. Don't go anywhere. As you strike the final blow, the remaining twin falls on the body of his dead brother. Sucks, suck. He pulls a cylinder out of his belt and presses his finger to the top. That's not good. With a rush of wind, their bodies turn to dust and disappear into the cracks between the tile. The cylinder hits the ground and rolls off into the shadows. Half a face mask lies in front of you. All right, do we leave the mask and go for the cylinder, take the half mask, or do both of them? Something makes you feel uneasy. Or leave both of them. Polls are done. YouTube voted for take the mask. Twitch voted to take the mask. I guess we're taking the mask. Mask say smoke it? No, sadly. That'd be cool, though. <laughs> Equip this card. Oh, wait. Yeah, take this mask. Equip this card, then reveal card 25. So 22, 23, 24. Take the half mask. So, uh, slide, uh, slip up. If you roll a one in action, we could do Encore, which is plus one attack damage. Oh, that's cool. You may use slip up three times. If you do discard twin mask left side, use cubes, cubes to keep count. I'm going to give it to Hildegard. Let's see how that goes. Okay, cool. Card 25. Still chapter two. The Dim. After a few twists and turns, you come to a dead end. Eh, sad. Game over. The wall is plain stone with one small square dead in its center. There are abstract symbols on it and a hor uh, horizontal slit in the middle. Do you have a key? No. I don't, I, I don't have a key. If so, roll the dice equal. Oh, wait, no, I do have keys. I do have keys. I have two keys. Holy cow. All right, so yes, there are a series. Oh, wait, wait, do you have a key? If so, roll the dice equal to the number of keys you have. Do any of them match the symbols below? All right, so we get to roll two dice. They're red, I assume. And we'll see if this matches. So we got to match that. Okay, they're both. Oh, we got two. Yeah, it's that one, right? It's like an S or no. A two. I'm dyslexic. It's like a two with a dot. So we we got it. We 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 did it. Hey, good job, chat. All right, there are a series of loud cracks. The wall in front of you slides open. You step into the corridor covered in prickly red moss. Ugh. Reveal card twenty six. All right, card twenty six. Smoke it. <laughs> uh, slime streaks. That sounds good. All right, we have to decide something. So get ready, chat. Crimson drapes of haunting vegetation stretch down the walls like blood. It's as if the corridor itself has suffered wounds that will never heal, or that never healed. Along the floors are streaks of slimy goo. Whatever you could leak, this volume of nastiness is certainly something to avoid. Something to avoid. Uh, a few steps later, the floor changes. It turns from a plain stone to decorative square tiles protruding slightly from the ground. They are adorned with the symbols you have seen throughout the spire. The slime trails flow along the tiles in a deliberate way. This looks to be a ritualistic occurrence. So, are we going to only step on the tiles with the time slide? Time with the slime slime trail. Holy cow. I will only step on the tiles with the slime. Or you don't slip on the st a slime. Yes slime, no slime. I was playing Hunt again. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. A lot of people want me to step on slime. Didn't, didn't, didn't you all hear the part where it says, whatever could leak this volume of nastiness is something to avoid. Avoid, chat. Avoid. Everyone's voting yes. <laughs> uh, the, 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 I know. It is something to avoid. <laughs> step proudly. <laughs> all right. So. We will step on the slime. We get to reveal card 28. Actually, they both say they reveal card 28. 
<laughs> oh, no, wait. I followed the slime. Okay, yeah, we said yes, right? We stepped on the slime. Um, okay. The tiles are clearly traps. I know, but you all want to stop on it. Follow the streaker. I follow the slime, which is what we did. With a cautious step, you move along the slime-covered tiles. They are slick and take some doing to keep from falling off, but you feel it's important to keep going. Each tile presses down as you put your weight on it, followed by a sharp crackling sound. God damn. You can't tell if this is a good thing, but you're still alive so far. After you step off the last tile, you look back and see compressed tiles pop up in the order they were pushed down. Then there is silence. You see something twinkle on the floor in front of you. Hey, reward! Coin of the Spire! Good job, chat. <laughs> All right, Angus, you take care, man. Appreciate you being here. Equip this card. Reveal card 31. I'm sorry I doubted you, chat. You all truly know how to play this game better than me. So, unbreakable in all accounts, but you pocket it anyhow. Or unremarkable in all, all accounts. We'll, we'll give it to Hilda card. She deserves it. Reveal card 31. See, we're looking out for you. I think you all secretly still wanted me to get to perish, but I'll watch you ahead once I'm home. All right, appreciate it. All right, this sounds good. All right, we're getting close to chapter three, which I'm going to take a short pause after that. This is, I think this is the last card of chapter two. This is chapter two. The next one says chapter three. All right, tale of two passages. You stand in front of two corridors. We have a choice. So get ready, chat. You stand in front of two corridors. The right... <sighs> is inclined with beds of inverted mushrooms and red moss draping down. The left descends into darkness. If Leo Freck is in your active party, we're not. So, Leo, he's not. All right. Do we go towards fungus or darkness? And this will lead us into chapter three, which will take a short break. So, quick vote, everyone. There's a lot of popularity for fungus. Mushrooms because D20 is a fungi. <laughs> fungus wins by a landslide fungus wins which means we're gonna do card 33 next